day everyone you're welcome to today's learning session by the grace of god today we'll be looking at the topic introduction to spss we'll be looking at this package and how it can be used to do some basic analysis our bedrock for success for today will be taken from ecclesiastics 11 verse 4 which says that he that observed the wind shall not sow, and he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. Through the wise one, and the, through the wisest king that ever lived, God inspired us to realize that we can't afford to wait for conditions or situations to be perfect before we do the needful. Procrastination, they say, is a thief of time. And if we must succeed in this time and age, we must learn not to just wait until all the whole conditions are favorable. Let's push ourselves a little and not wait until things are convenient before we do the needful. May the Lord help us as we continue in our studies. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful to you for bringing us to this learning time again. As we go through the topic, um, Introduction to Spaces, we pray you grant us understanding and help us to be able to use this package and some other softwares and computer packages that are essential for our studies. In Jesus' name, Amen. Introduction to Spaces. What exactly does the acronym Spaces mean? We would look at it in today's presentation. The acronym SPSS was formerly meant to mean Statistical Package for Social Sciences when it was first developed. But now, since it is not only social scientists that makes use of the package, it has been modified to mean Statistical Product and Service Solution. And it is one of the most popular statistical packages that can perform highly complex data manipulation and analysis with simple instruction. Several add-ins have been provided for this package to make up for some of the shortfalls of it. We have a higher version, which is the SPSS AMOS that is used for structural equation modeling and PLS. The SPSS have four major windows, the data editor, the output viewer, the syntax editor, the script window, and we will look at basically what this does. When we talk about the data editor, it's just a spreadsheet that looks normally like your, um, like your Excel sheet, and it is used for defining and entering as well as editing and displaying data. We must take note that whatever we have keyed in on the variable view is what will appear on the data view and will determine the type of whether it is numerals or names it's going to take the output viewer is the aspect that displays the output of the analysis that had been done and the syntax editor is used for composition is an extension that is used that can be used for the saving of our file the script editor is or the script window provides the opportunity to write full-blown programs in a basic-like language. So when we want to write programming and we want to write um, codes, the script window affords us that opportunity. However, for the sake of this class and for the sake of um, the simple analysis we would be going through, we'll be looking at basically the data editor and the data editor has two major views in this window or two major sheets in this window we have the data view where the numbers the numerals or the values are entered and we have the variable view and we're going to see what each one looks like this is the variable view on the data editor 
the variable view affords you the opportunity of describing your data the first colon we have on the variable view is the name and what does the name affords you the opportunity of doing the name affords you the opportunity of writing the first character of the variable it could be name it could be gender it could be a unique variable that must be less than 64 characters we must take note that a full description of your variable cannot be given under name because of the limited space for characters and you cannot also use the space bar as we are going to see when we come to practicing it spaces are not provided it is only on that label that we can give a full description we can see this we go to type the type box or the type colon gives you various options that helps you to describe your variable is your variable a numeral or is it a is it a data that requires further description with names and identification as labels so the basic items to be to be concerned about under your type is either your numeric or your string so if it is a label as a means of identification you use the string and if it is numbers then you can use the numerals the width allows you to determine the number of character SPSS will allow you to to be entered in that variable so the width gives you the opportunity of determining the number of character SPSS will recognize the decimal place tells us how many decimal places and if you do not want any decimal place at all you just put zero there then under the label this is where the details of the variable can be given and unlike the name where you have 64 characters under the label you can have as long as, long as 256 characters under the values this is used to suggest which numbers represent and which categories when the value when the variables um, are entered in for instance if i want to use one to indicate male and two to indicate female it is at this point that this is done so in defining the variable you will need to click on the value and after clicking on the value you would see another icon box that would come out to show you um, where you can enter in the variables when we get to the hands-on training we would see it the last one I want you to be concerned about, the align simply requires you, do you want it, your data to be tilted towards the right, towards the middle, or towards the left? Under the measure, there are three main measures, the scale, the ordinal, and the nominal. Let me start from the last, the nominal. Under the nominal, as you can see, it's actually a labeling scale, a scale, for, a scale that is used to identify names as labels. So when it is names, when it is not having a particular ordered array, you use nominal. For instance, gender, it's either male or female, color, red, yellow, black. So these are means of identification and these are classified. So when you have such data set, you pick a nominal data. For the ordinal data, it has a particular order within the data set. For instance, strongly agree, agree, disagree, fairly agree, excellent, very good. When we have an ordered array, we use the ordinal. Then for the scale, a data that has been, that, ha that does not have a particular um, level of uh, interval in between them, and that has been added up to form your, to form another, another set of data can be classified under the scale the scaled data so when you don't have a particular ordered data first second third fourth and you don't have it arranged in strongly agree agree 
disagree or maybe it is a data you have you have gathered a a a, a um a categorical data and you converted it to a continuous data it, then you it will take the measure of scale please let's take note of that now we will take a look at a hands-on training of an example. Now this is the variable view that is being talked about. You can see how the data set is entered, the student, the hours of study, the IQ, the examination grade. Of course the student, since it's not given in names, they are given in numbers. We have numeric hours of study is given in timing. Um, the IQ is also given as a score and the examination is also given as a score. The width by default is 8, but if you don't want it to be 8, you can equally change it. The decimal place, we assume a decimal place of 2. Then we can give the full description, student's number, hours of study, intelligent quotient, examination grade. Like explained earlier on, under this um, name, we do not have a space bar, but under this, it can take a space bar. We are not assigning values, so none is given. But if we want to assign values, let's assume we want to assign 1 to male. We click add and we want to assign 2 to female. And we click add and we click OK. So if this is what we want to do, we can assign. And that is the same way you assign you strongly agree if i want to assign six to strongly agree add five to agree add four to indifferent i add and that's how you add it and you click OK at the end of the day. So it has assigned those values and it will recognize those values. But for the sake of this example, we do not need, we do not need those values. We do not need those values. Okay, so for the missing, for the missing, if you want any of your data set to be, to be regarded if you don't want any of them to be regarded as missing, just put none there and it would it will take care it will take care of it. So we want our data to be aligned to the right and that's that's it. Then this is an ordinal data since it is from one to ten and these are scale data since they had to do with scores of the student. Whatever we have typed in here comes and it appears on your data view. So this is a student, this is the hours of study, this is the IQ, and this is the examination grade. Now we have 1 to 10 students. This is the hours they put in in study student. 1 puts in 9 hours, has a 99 IQ level, and scored 56 in his exam. And so we have this. And so we want to run a simple analysis on this. In order to run this simple analysis, you can actually run a simple regression or a multiple regression. When we talk about a simple regression, it is one variable on your dependent and one variable on your independent. But when we talk about a multiple regression, we have more than one variable on your independent variable and just one variable on your dependent variable. Now let's take a look at this. I click on analyze and I go to regression and I go to linear so we are just going to look at how to run a simple regression analysis so if I want to run a simple regression analysis I look at my variables of study which depends on which of course examination grade as uh, examination grade depends on the hours of study and intelligent quotient so I can run it as a simple regression put in examination grade in the dependent variable and take in hours of study into the independent variable and I simply run it. Click OK and the output editor will process the result for a very short while and in a short while the result will be out. So we can see the result here 
The hours of study is the independent variable. The examination grade is a dependent variable. The R here is your correlation coefficient. Your R square is your coefficient of determination. And your adjusted R square is also a coefficient of determination. Please take note. Your R square is used to explain as a coefficient of determination for a simple regression. And adjusted R square is used for a multiple regression. This is the standard error of the estimate that shows you the adequacy of your model. And the threshold for adequacy of model is 2.5. So we can see now that this model is not adequate and that is why we have a 5.5. Now the R shows us the level of association or the level of relationship between the hours of study and the examination grade. And it shows us that there is a very strong positive relationship between the hours of study and examination grade because we have a correlation coefficient of 0.961. Now we use the arrow square to do the interpretation for the for the um, coefficient of determination. So it simply means that 92.4% of changes that occurs in examination grade is as a result of the hours of study. While the remaining um, 100 minus 92.4, that's about, about 7.6%. While the remaining 7.6% is as a result of other factors not captured in the model. This is the ANOVA summary that shows us the fitness of the model and whether hours of study is a good predictor of examination grade. And indeed, looking at it, our, our F statistics is highly statistically significant. Now, to know whether a, a, a result is significant or not, you check the SIG and see whether the values here is greater than 0 0.05. If it is greater than 5%, it means it is not significant. But if it is less than 5%, it means it is significant. So, the overall statistics is significant, which shows us that hours of study is a good predictor of examination grade. So if this was a hypothesis, that as of study has no significant effect on examination grade, based on this result, that hypothesis will be rejected because as of study significantly affects examination grade. Now let's go to the coefficient that shows us the effect. Now looking at this coefficient, we can see the effect of the the effect that as of study have on the examination grade. Now we can see that as of study has three a coefficient of 3.677. 3.677. So if I am to fit the regression of equation of this line, it is y equals a plus beta x. Our a here is 27.488, which is 27.49. 27.49 plus 3.67 or 3.68x. So that is our equation of the line. So y is equal to 27.49 plus 3.68x. So how do we interpret this? It simply means that there is a positive significance. Now we can see that the, the, the significance is 0 0.002. So we see that there is a positive significant effect as a study has a positive significant effect on examination grade because as examination as as of study is improved by one hour examination grade is improved by about 3.677 units in the same vein when as of study is reduced by one hour examination grade drops by 3.677 now, the 27.488, which is our constant or our intercept, shows us um, the, the variation. It shows us, it shows us, okay, it shows us what happens to examination grade when hours of study is held constant. That is, when hours of study is kept at a zero point. So, if student does not put in any hour of study, the examination grade will still stand at 27.488.
So that's how to interpret it. So to bring out the basic parameters in this result, you bring out your constant, your hours of study, your T value, your um, your C, and since it's a simple regression, rather than using the F statistics, you use the T value to determine whether the hypothesis should be rejected or accepted. And in this case, you can see that it is significant too. If it was a multiple regression, that's when you would have used the F value as it explained earlier on. So in this, you bring out your R and your R square into your table. Let's take another, let's take a look at another example of a multiple regression. So we have this sheet. So we want to test for hours of study and IQ. We want to look at the combined effect of hours of study and IQ level on the examination grade. And so we click analyze, we go to regression, we go to linear, and in this case, examination grade is already in, hours of study is in. So you just bring in intelligent quotient. And since it is a multiple regression, you can get your collinearity diagnostic. This collinearity diagnostic is the test for multicollinearity to check if there is a collinear relationship amongst the variables. And that is why we'll get our VIF result. Our VIF is the variance inflation factor, which helps to tell us whether there is a collinear relationship or not. And most scholars, some scholars have said when your VIF is less than five, there is um, no severe multicollinearity. Some scholars have said when it is less than 10, just back up with, um, with scholars that fulfills the threshold, the acceptable threshold you have. And you can have your plot in order to get your, in order to get your um, histogram and your scatter diagram. So you move your zip right into your Y, y box and move your Z recipe into your X box. Click on histogram and normal distribution and click on continue. And then you click on OK and your result is good to go. And so we can see the result running. The result is running. We'll give it some minutes for it to be out. Yes, and we can see that the result is out. So we have the examination grade, intelligent quotient and hours of study. Wow, our R shows a perfect relationship. 1.00 so it shows that a perfect relationship exists between intelligent quotient hours of study and examination grade and instead of using the arrow square we'll be using the adjusted arrow square which says that 99.9 .9 variation that occurs or changes that occurs in examination grade is as a result of intelligent quotient and hours of study while the 0.1 percent is as a result of other factors not captured in the model now we can see the overall fitness of the model and we can see that the F statistics is statistically significant, which will lead us to a rejection of the hypothesis. So if a hypothesis was formed on this, it's simply going to say intelligent quotient and hours of study has no significant or has no significant combined effect on examination grade. And that hypothesis will be rejected because it has a combined significant effect as shown by the result. Now, to check the adequacy of the model, we see that this is 0 0.53, so this is adequate because the result is less than 2.5. We go to the VIF, okay, so the VIF tells us whether the result is, whether there's a collinear relationship amongst the independent variable. And since we have 1.059 and 1.059, so the average is 1.059. So it shows that there is no severe collinear relationship. And of course, the tolerance factor is also greater than 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, as some scholars would say. So that tells us that there is no severe collinearity issues. Now, coming to the interpretation of this, so we see that the constant is negative, meaning if hours of study and intelligent quotient is held at 0 0.0. It means that um, examination grade will be negative, as shown by the constant value here. So the constant is negative. The hours of study, if improved, it has a significant positive effect on grade. And the intelligent quotient also has a significant positive effect on examination grade. If hours of study is improved by one hour, 
examination grade will improve by 3.93 and vice versa. If it also reduces by one hour, examination grade will also drop by 3.93. If intelligent quotient is improved by one hour, examination grade will improve by 0 0.597. And if it also drops by one hour, it will reduce by 0 0.597. So those are the important parameters to um, interpret when you have your regression analysis. All right, so for us to quickly run our correlation, we also go to correlate and you go to bivariate. So you pick bivariate correlation. Now we want to check the relationship that exists between intelligent quotient, hours of study, and examination grade. So let's move in the three. Now we can see that in our correlation table, we don't have the a space for dependent variable because for correlation, you can actually examine the relationship that exists between multiple independent variable and even a dependent and an independent variable. So they just take the position of same variable. So I highlight that and I move it in. I want to check for piercing. So I want to check for piercing, which is PPMC, piercing product moment correlation coefficient and Spearman. So I click on the two and I click on OK to run the result. And in a GFE, the result is out. So the first result we have is that of the piercing. So taking a look at the results, we see that um, as of study and inter in, in intelligent quotient, we see the relationship between examination grade and each of them too. So we can say now that intelligent quotient has a correlation coefficient of minus 0.235 with hours of study. So when we look at hours of study and intelligent quotient, it is minor, it is a negative relationship. The hours of study and examination grade an examination grade has a significant positive relationship. Significant, very strong positive relationship, 0 0.961. So it means that as a study is an important factor in examination grade. But as a study is not an important, it's not a significant factor in intelligent quotient. Now we go to the relationship between intelligent quotient and hours of study. We can still see it minus 0 0.235 and it is not significant. For it to be significant, you would have gotten 0 0.00 or 0 0.001 or less than 0 0.001. But we can see 0 0.513 which shows us that it is not significant. But here we can see the relationship between intelligent quotient and, exam and examination grade. So the relationship between intelligent quotient and examination grade is a very weak, positive, insignificant relationship, 0 0.040. So we can see that the, that is for the Pearson correlation coefficient. Now for the Spearman, you can get a result that is too far away. So you can see, see it as of study and intelligent quotient minus 0.254. And the one with an examination grade, 0.982, a very strong, positive, and significant relationship. Intelligent quotient and hours of study is negative and it's not significant. Intelligent quotient and examination grade is also negative and it is not significant. And so we see the relationship between these variables. So for your, for your correlation it does not show you the extent to which it affects it by looking at the effect it only shows you the direction of the relationship so that's correlation analysis let's take a look at um, a more detailed questionnaire analysis we want to look at this spreadsheet this is a spreadsheet of of a, res of a questionnaire that has been coded. You can see the demography from demography one to demography eight, and you can see all other results. So demography takes your nominal scale, 
and the other statement now takes your ordinal scale it takes your ordinal scale now in order to analyze this result if you check your data view everything you have also entered in from for each questionnaire is entered in on your on your spreadsheet and we have this spreadsheet as given here now we want to analyze the results we want to analyze the data so we have several factors several independent factors in this question we have um, information technology so this study is looking at how remuneration information technology infrastructure and timely care how it affects profitability how it affects quality of health how it affects customer satisfaction how it affects productivity how it affects employee efficiency and in all how it affects performance so all these profitability quality health customer satisfaction productivity employee efficiency are all variables under performance and these are all the sub independent variable remuneration information technology infrastructure and timely care so let's assume that i want to see how remuneration information technology infrastructure and timely care how it affects the performance of the firm so i go to analyze i go to regression i go to linear and when i go to linear i move in all all those variables will not be in initially is because I have test run the analysis, that's why you can see it in, but it would be on the icon like this, so you need to move it in. So move in performance, which is a dependent variable, and move in the various sub independent variable, remuneration, information technology, infrastructure, and timely care, and move it into the independent. Then go on your statistics, click on your collinearity diagnostic so that you can know the, if there is a collinear relationship amongst the variables of interest. Go to your plots and move in your z -pred into your y variable, your z resid to your x variable, click on your histogram, click on your normal plot and click continue. And so we have that in and then you can now click on OK and it runs the analysis and within a short time the results will also be out for our extraction and interpretation it is very important that we also know how to extract this data when it is when the analysis is done because when the analysis is done it comes with several tables that would be and not everything in the table is actually required so you need to pick what is relevant for the analysis so we still await the result to be out it's actually um, loading slowly so we'll give it some more time for it to be. so we can see the result it's out so it tells us that timely care remuneration infrastructure information technology are all independent variable and the dependent variable is performance so the r shows us that there is, well, a moderate positive relationship, 68.9. A moderate positive relationship exists. It is an average relationship that exists between the performance and all the independent variable. Now, since it is a multiple regression, we are going to be using the adjusted arrow square to do our interpretation for our coefficient of determination. So it simply means that 46.8% of the changes that are causing performance is as a result of these factors. While the remaining changes, which is about 43.4, um, is as a result of other factors not captured in the model. This shows us the overall fitness of the model and it tells us that timely care remuneration infrastructure and information are good predictors of performance in the sense that they significantly affect performance. We now go to the individual effect. Now let's take a look at it. Oh, the, the remuneration is not significant. It does not have a significant effect even though the effect is positive the effect is not significant because the value at the C is greater than 0 
Now we go to information technology. Information technology significantly affects performance. This, which implies that if information, and it's a positive effect. So if information technology increases by one unit or by one band or by whatever information technology is used in calculating, it means performance will improve by 0 0.244 uh, units and vice versa. Infrastructure also has a significant positive effect because this is less than 0 0.05. So when performance also, when um, infrastructure is improved by one unit, performance will improve by 0.515. And timely care also has a positive significant effect on performance as seen by the result. Now let's check if our model is adequate. We'll go to the standard error of the model summary, 0 0.67. Yes, the model is adequate because the threshold is less than 2.5. Now we'll go to the variance inflation factor to check the, to check for the, um, if there's a multicollinearity issues, if there are multicollinearity issues or if there's a collinear relationship amongst the independent variable. So we can see 1.881 is less than 10, 2.5710 is less than 10, and it's also less than 5, 2.426, so if you go by the scholars of 5, it's also less than 5, it's less than 10. So when you find the average of this, it's going to be less than 5, and it's also going to be less than 10. So it tells us that you cannot say there is no collinear relationship, or there's no multicollinearity, but the best thing to say is that a case of severe severe multicollinearity or severe collinear issues does not exist because the average of the all the vif or the respective vifs are less than five percent are uh, less than five or less than ten as the case may be depending on the scholar you are cited and the tolerance factor is also greater than 0 0.1 or greater than 0 0.2 depending on the on the scholars cited. Now, if all of these tables, one, two, three, four, five, is to be extracted using, using um, upper six style, I want to extract this table. Let me copy them to Word and extract them. So I want to extract all these tables, the basic things that are needed from this table. I copy, let me go to Word. So I can go to Word, so I go to Word and I will paste the result there and after pasting the result I begin to extract the important indicators that I would need for interpretation. Please, let's, let's, let's hold on and let's see it gets extracted okay let's see this so these are the tables that i have copied from the output i have ex exported from my spss and i want to now bring out the important indicators from it so i would create another table I'll create another table. Let me put it side by side. I want us to take a look at this and also take a look at this. Yes. So we can see the extracted table on this. The extracted table using using um, upper six. So the R is 0 0.689. So your table will take this. You have a table like this. So you have your model. You have all the indicators, your constants, the remuneration, information technology, infrastructure, timely care. The N shows the number of respondents. That's the number of questionnaires administered. You have your beta, which are these values as indicated on your coefficient. If you check your coefficient on your output, you're going to see that those are the same values. 
So 1.254.048.244.157.237. Now that is what, that is exactly what I have here. 1.254.048.244.157.237. And 0 0.237. I'm using one of my student analysis that graduated to show us how to run even for your chapter four so that you can get to do these things yourself. You can get to practice it and get to analyze your project yourself. Now we go to the significance of it. So you get your significance. So these are the significant 0 0.000 for your constant. 0 0.338, 0 0.000, 0 0.009, 0 0.000. So it's only remuneration that is not significant. So you come here and you have that. 0 0.338, 0 0.000, 0 0.009, 0 0.000. You pick your T values. Your T values is the next value you pick and you just pick it. So under the coefficient table, you pick your beta, your standard error, no, you don't even need your standard error of the individual one. Your beta, your T value, your significance. That's all you need from the coefficient table. So your beta, your significance, your T value. And then you go to pick the overall significance in your ANOVA table. So this is it. You go to the ANOVA, which is the table before this. So the significance you pick is just this. You want to see if it is significant. This is the degree of freedom. So 4,293, and this is your fitness result, 66.202. And you have 0 0.000 as the, this thing, as the significance, which is less than 0 0.05. Since it is a multiple regression, you pick your R, 0 0.689, and you pick your adjusted R square. As explained earlier on, for your... Um, simple regression, you pick this as your coefficient of determination, which is your arrow square. But for a multiple regression, you pick your adjusted arrow square. And this is a standard error of the entire estimate that you're using assessing the adequacy of your model. And that was how this table was extracted. So you have your ANOVA, your R value, your adjusted arrow square, your F. This is the degree of freedom. You know, since it is um, a two-way test, you're going to have your N1, which is your first degree of freedom, and your N2. So we have the fact, the result here, 66.202. If you check it, let me show, let me show you. This is the 66.202. So you have four as against 293. So your degree of freedom, you know, if it was a if it was a one way test, you it would have been um, n minus one or t minus one. But in this case, you need to get your 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 n one and your n two, and that is why we have this. So you pick this, you pick this, and you pick the degree of freedom. That is how this table came. 4,293, 66.202. These are the predictors, which are your independent variable. So you have your constant, your remuneration, information technology, infrastructure, timely care, then your dependent variable, which is your performance. So this is just a summary of the entire table for all the tables that we have brought up. So if you have all those tables, now looking at the interpretation, table 4.3.1F, that's the table above, Reviews the result of the multiple regression analysis. It has been established that it's a multiple regression which examines the effect of strategic factors. So these are strategic factors, remuneration, information, technology, infrastructure, and timely care on the performance of maybe a hospital or whatever. The result showed that the remuneration, that remuneration, now let's look at remuneration. The result showed that remuneration, we are trying to interpret it one by one now. 0.048, T is 0.959, significance is 0.338. You don't have to write it as 0.338, you can just write P is less than 0.05. And that's where they got this. So this should have been, okay, P is greater because it is not significant. P is greater than 0.005. So this is the beta, this is the T value, this is the beta, this is the T value, and this is the significance. 
and we can see that the result is not significant. So it has a positive but insignificant effect on performance. Now let's look at information technology. While information technology, let's look at information technology, 0.244, it is significant, okay? So it has a positive significant effect on performance. Let's look at it. While information technology and infrastructure with these values, and you can see that in this case, P is less than 0 0.005, 0 0.05. So you don't have to write if um, P is equal to 0 0.00 because there is an invisible one at the end. So you just write P is less than 0 0.05. P is less than 0 0.05. And timely care all have positive and significant effect on performance of wherever the company is situated or the study is situated. The result of the analysis revealed that three of the dimensions of strategic factors, which are information technology, infrastructure, and timely care, have significant effect on the performance of Babcock University Teaching Hospital. This implies that information technology, infrastructure, and timely care are critical factors because they have a significant effect. So this is how you interpret it. When you have a result before you and you are to interpret it, you have to tell us whether it has a significant effect and what, which ones are determinants, which ones are critical factors, which ones are the ones the organization should concentrate on. So from this result now, it implies that the organization or the, the institution should focus on information technology, infrastructure, and timely care as the critical factors that determines performance. It is not just remuneration that determines performance. Now we go to the correlation coefficient. So the co correlation coefficient of 0 0.689, that is what we have in the table here, 0 0.689. So the correlation coefficient now of 0 0.689 shows that a moderately strong positive relationship, it is not very strong and it is not very weak. Of course, for it to be very weak, it has to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.3, moderate 0 0.4, 0 0.5, it becomes moderately strong, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, but from 0 0.8, to 0 0.99 is very very strong so we have 0.689 shows a moderately strong positive relationship existing between the sub variables of strategic factors and the performance of wherever the study is situated now the multiple the coefficient of multiple determination now you can see that it is the adjusted arrow square that is used and not the arrow square is 0.468 which indicates that Strategic factors explains about 46.8% now combined together. You're not going to be picking them one by one. So you're going to say strategic factors combined together explains about 46.8% of the changes that occurs in performance. This should be of the changes that occurs in the business performance. So that should be what should be there of selected insurance company, the study is selected insurance company, then you will subtract this from 100, while the remaining 53.2% could be attributed to other factors not included in the model. Of course, not all factors can be included in your model. If we look at factors that affect student performance, it is not only hours of study and IQ that affect student performance. There could be other determinants, so that would capture for it. Also, the F statistics, you write the F this way with the degree of freedom and the result at P is less than 0 0.05 shows the overall fitness of the model and shows that the model is significant in predicting the effect of strategic performance of the firm. Now, this is the equation of the line. So if you are asked to fit the equation of the line, this is the equation of the line. This is your Y. This is your A value. And this is the one for information technology. This is the one for um, IFS. What's IFS? What's the I I acronym? Um, the full interpretation of IFS. That should be. That should be. Um, we have information infrastructure and timely care. Now we can see that remuneration was removed from this model. Why was remuneration removed? Because it is not significant. So this is like the predictive model. This is the predictive model. So the 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 
um, remuneration has been removed because it is not significant. However, it is not out of place to also put it so that we can all see the entire equation of the line. So this, um, this is rather the prescriptive model, not the predictive, sorry. The predictive model would have included the remuneration value, even though it's not significant. Then the, predict, the prescriptive model will now remove the, it will remove the remuneration. So this can be regarded as your prescriptive model for the organization. That is, the organization is meant to focus on information technology, on infrastructure, and on timely care. However, the initial predictive model included uh, remuneration. So we can see the interpretation there. The, the further interpretation goes to show that we are now interpreting the A value. The regression model shows that holding strategic factors subvariables to a constant zero, meaning we don't, we don't, um, there are no, all of these strategic factors are missing from this organization. What will happen to performance? It says performance will still stand at a constant of 1.254, 1.254, which implies that even in the absence of the strategic fact of these factors in the, the hospital will still experience a level of performance. The result of the multiple regression also indicates that information technology, infrastructure, and timely care, when improved by one unit, will positively improve the performance of the hospital by 0.244 information technology, 0.157 infrastructure, and 0.237 timely care. It will improve it respectively. So you see, all those things we have been interpreting one by one is what we have here. This implies that an increase in information technology, infrastructure, and timely care will lead to an increase in the performance of the selected firm. The result also shows an overall statistical significance with P less than 0 0.05, which implies that strategic factors with particular emphasis on information technology infrastructure and timely care are important determinants of the performance of the selected firm. And this result suggests that m more attention should be paid towards developing information technology, infrastructure, and timely care in order to improve the performance of the hospital. Therefore, you see, now, based on this, based on the overall statistical significance, the null hypothesis which states that strategic factors or variables have no significant combined effect on the performance of selected firm was rejected. So that's how to interpret it when it comes to project analysis. So you just pick out the important indicators and interpret it one after another. It is so simple and it is something you can always play your hands around it. Practice, they say, brings perfection. So you can keep practicing these things until it becomes a part of you. Quickly, I will introduce the e-views to you. We would run one of the regression we have run on SPSS to show you that you will still get the same result irrespective of the package you are using, be it Stata, be it your Excel Miner, be it your um, Aru Studio, that's your Stochastic Frontier, and whatever package you use that can be used to run regression analysis will still give you the same result. So let's take a look at the e-views briefly. So this is the e-views interface, which simply means econometric views. Most times we use the e-views when we want to run for secondary data. However, when we have some primary data, it can also run it. Remember that under the um, um, secondary data, your data can be of time series. It can be um, under your data can be a time series data, which is gathered over a long period of time. It can be a panel data, a data that is gathered across several units over a long period of time, and it can also be a cross-sectional data data you gather at a particular point in time. Now, this is the eViews 10. We have the eViews 7. We have the eViews 12. eViews 11. But this is eViews 10. Now, I want to create a work file. So once you cl click on your eViews, it brings out this page. The next thing you need to do is to create a new eViews work file, and it will bring out the result. So let's assume that I want to work on the data set that we use for the hours of study IQ examination grade. Let me say I want to work for, let me use it as a time series data for a student over a particular period of time. 
So let's say from 2011 to 2020, I want to work on this to see how it affects the student. Now I come to the e-views, I set up my worksheet, it's an annual data. I want to set up from 2011 to 2020. So that's all I do. I come here and I label it scores. Scores. And I click OK. So it shows me what I want to do. There are several ways to import your data. But the simple thing you can do is that you can just come to your Excel sheet. You can highlight on all the data you have typed already on your Excel. Just copy it. Copy it normally. Go to your e-views. And just paste it. Control V. And it brings in the data. Now you can paste it here. Let me assume I want to paste it here. Yes, I paste it there. I don't want to paste it on the command. So I come to the work file itself and I paste it. So I click on next and it goes. I click on next, it goes. So by the time I click on next, I wait for it to bring out the last icon and I click on finish. So by the time I finish, my data is already exported. So there are several commands you can give if you want to give the command using um, several data listing, but you can just use your direct work file to work this. So for instance, I want to run a descriptive analysis on this. All I need to do is click on what I want to control it and hold it down. Then you click on view, open selected, open it as one window. If I want to open it as separate windows, I'll open it as separate windows. But in this case, I want to open it as a single window and I want to open it as a group. So it comes out as a group. And once it comes out as a group, under view, I can go to my descriptive analysis and click on common sample and my descriptive analysis is out. So it shows me my mean, my median, the maximum, the minimum, the standard deviation, the skewness, of course, skewness shows you the normality of your distribution. The threshold for skewness is zero, some will say two. The threshold for kurtosis is three, so this is relatively normal. The Jack Berra shows you also the normality of your series. You check whether it is significant. Of course, the null of the hypothesis says series is normal. The alternative says series is not normally distributed. Now, if you look at it, the results are all not statistically significant, which says that you are accepting your null hypothesis. So when we are accepting our null, it means that the series is normal for the Jack Berra result under your secondary data. But don't bother yourself with that. It's, it's a, it entails a whole lot. We need to go further into details as we take um, e-views in full we will get to see it. This is just to prove a point that no matter the um, package you use, you'll get the same result. Now, I want to run this. I want to run this. So I can also go to view and I click open selected, open as one window. Now, when I want to run it, I go to equation. So this is my least square regression, ordinary least square. Your first variable must be your dependent variable and all others will be your independent variable. Now, the way I have entered it in right from the beginning has made e views to position it this way. But if you position it and you see that examination grade is not your dependent variable, please make sure your examination grade is put at first and you click it OK and then you will see the result. So this is the result of your e views. So we can see it here. Now the hours of study, 3.93. Now if you check your, if you check the output that we got under our hours of study and under our hours of study for the SPSS, when we run it with intelligent, thank you. This is a 3.93. The A was minus 38.06. And the intelligent quotient was 0.597. So let's check the e-views results. Can we see the C? In this case, A is the same thing as your C, which is your constant. And this is minus 38.05. Your IQ is 0 0.5. And your hours of study is 3.93. And you can see the significance of each. And if you check it too on your, S, on your 
SPSS outputs, you see that they were all significant. Now let's go to the R. Let's go to the model. So we can see that adjusted R score is 0.99 and our R is 1.00. Let's check the result on eViews. It can't be too far away from that. So we can see, you can see the adjusted R square is 0.99. Okay. You can see the R square. This didn't bring out the R results. You can see the R square 0.99. Then you can see the F statistics 5684. Now let's check that and check the F statistics to be sure that it is significant. So you can see 5684.319 and the result is significant. So if you check your E views too, you'll get to see it 5684.319 and the result is also significant. So you can see that the E views and the SPSS would give you the same result. It is just giving it to you. Look at the standard error of the estimate 0.53. Now let's look at the standard error to confirm that you can see 0.53. So you can see that the result is actually not different. So irrespective, if I also run Stata, you get the same result. So these are things you can just play around with and get familiar with. Don't let anybody scare you that analysis is so hard, analysis is so difficult. No, analysis is not difficult. It's something you can actually be at home with. It's something you can run with. You can actually analyze your project yourself. You can gather your data, analyze your work yourself, and get to understand how to interpret it. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Today we have looked at the SPSS, the various um, data editor and the and the output editor we've looked at a variable view we've looked at how to run simple regression how to run simple correlation and also how to um, interpret the result and we have also um, confirmed the result of our regression by running it on eviews i hope this has really been a blessing to you thank you for tuning in god bless you let's pray our father in heaven we are grateful to you for this class session Thank you for helping us to come this far and thank you for helping us to be able to learn how to run with some um, statistical package that some of the things we can do manually we can do on all the software father i pray for all those under the sound of my voice that you help them to practice these things so that it can become a part of them bless everyone and help them to do well in life endeavors thank you for answered prayers lord in jesus